feel like I'm in these lights. Right. I feel like I'm in church for real, man. I, you know, give it up for me. I did just get out of jail. Just got out of jail. What? <laughs> no, I'm lying. I didn't just get out of jail. <laughs> no, but I do feel like I'm in church up in here. And I haven't been in church in about three and a half years ever since I got kicked out of church for touching the communion table. You know, that's like a, the ultimate sin in some churches. That deacon, it was you know, the old deacons too. Deacon Cephas, he was mad too. Did that brother just touch that communion table? Get him up out of here. What the usher's that? He was brother Sean was up there too. Get him out. <laughs> oh man, I won't be before you long tonight. How many times have you heard that lie in church? <laughs> Any pastors in here? Any pastors? None? No pastors? Good. Because pastors be lying too, don't they? They've been preaching for like four hours. I'm about to close. I'm about to close. See, I'm closing my Bible. He said his Bible and he put his little iPad. <laughs> like, Pastor, we've been here. It's Thursday. We've been here since Sunday at 9 o'clock. Come on, Mary. Yeah, Sunday. Man, church. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in church. Y'all, 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 y'all fast? Anybody fast? Yeah. yeah. Fasting is a good thing. The brother talk about fasting and praying. Fasting is a good thing. Cause I want y'all to know that I have been on a fast. I've been fasting for the last 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, y'all see this belly? Yeah. I'm pregnant, y'all. Pregnant. I'm pregnant in the spirit with the ministry. See, I didn't get it. What else be going on at church? You know, when, when you're talking about fasting, did anybody do this besides me? When you go on a fast, you know, sometimes y'all, and what one fast I don't get is the Daniel fast. Any Bereans in here? Y'all know what a Berean is? One person know what a Berean is? You know what a Berean is? Okay, in, in Acts, I think it's Acts 17 11. It says that the Bereans were more noble than others because they took what they heard and went to search the scriptures to see if what he's saying was true. But in a lot of churches, we got what we call a Daniel fast. And if you read your Bible, you realize Daniel, when he fasted, Daniel didn't eat anything. You just think about that. Go think I'm lying, go home and study. Reading Daniel, when Daniel on a fast, it's 21 days, he didn't eat nothing. But when we go on Daniel fast, what we eat? Fruits and vegetables. So go study your scripture. But anyway, that's what's that's well, a side note for y'all to go study. To show yourself approved. Anyway, been on a fast. And sometimes you have what they call a six to six fast. Y'all ever had that? It's a six to six fast. Well, I used to, well, I ain't gonna say I cheated, but you know, usually I don't wake up until about seven. But on them six to six fast days, I get up about four thirty. And cook like a huge breakfast, like I had eggs and bacon and pancakes and sausage and Captain Crunch and Frosted Flakes and Rice Krispies and Texas Toast and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I mean, I have all of it just spread out right before six o'clock. And you know, it's getting time. I'm trying to eat it all up. You know, I'm trying to watch real quick. Watch the clock. It's almost six. Woo! Man, thank you, Lord. And then you get to work, and on that day. That's what everybody want to treat you to lunch that day. <laughs> we having Popeyes for dinner. I'm gonna treat y'all. Treat you gonna treat me today? And you know the Bible said, don't tell everybody when you're on a fast. You're supposed to, you know, anoint your head and go in your closet. Don't tell. Them. Oh, I'm fasting. You know, we're gonna be super Christian. I'm fasting. I'm fasting. No, but everybody want to treat you. Oh, that's when they have the good food in the cafeteria at work. Can't win for losing. Then you get home. You know, it's almost six, so you start cooking your food about four thirty, five o'clock. <laughs> Start cooking that food, getting it ready. It's like 5:30, 5:45. You done check the greens; they simmering, really looking good. Yeah. You want to taste it, but you can't really taste test it because you know you. So the greens good, and it's like 5:58. You can set your plate. You got it all ready, and you count down. Lord, thank you. Thank you for keeping me on this fast. I know when Tina tried to to, to tempt me with that. That spicy wing for Popeyes, you kept me. <laughs> you kept me, Lord. Dang, man. Clock right? Tell me that. It's six o'clock. Thank you, Lord. You just start tearing that food up, boy. Ooh, it ain't just me. All right. Anybody ever been a part of the sleep ministry in their church? Y'all know what the sleep ministry is? 
Give me a chair. Somebody give me a chair. The sleep ministry is like the best ministry because you can bless a lot of people, and that's when you get your visions and your dreams and your sleep. You know, that's when God really speaks to you. That's why I got kicked out of the church because I was like the head of the sleep ministry, and the pastor was trying to get away with it, but I, you know, sleep ministry. So I used to be in a pulpit. So, you know, you have been a poor, but it's just like this. Everybody looking at you. You know, the pastor, they're preaching. But, you know, I was a troublemaker in the church. Sometimes, I, you know, when I wasn't in the poor, but me in the pews, just picking on stuff. Look, look at his shoes. He know them shoes do not match that suit. You know, just be messing with people. But everybody looking at you, you know. And so you up in there, the pastor preaching, he preaching good. So, you know, you got your Bible. Turn your Bibles. And for some reason, we love the 23rd Psalms. I don't know what's up with the 23rd Psalms. We love it. So open up to the 23rd Psalm. Put the Bible on your lap. Now, this is take notes. Because you can try this Sunday when you go to church. Especially Easter. Because you know y'all hold a little extra longer on Easter for some reason. Put your Bible on your lap. Put it on your lap. Open up to the 23rd Psalms now. Pass the preaching like, amen. Amen. Get to nod a little bit. Yes, sir. You're preaching, Pastor. That's it. That's that word right there. Write that down. Write that down. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah time for the sleep ministry. And so what you got to do is, you already got your Bible open. Act like you turn the page, you know. And you go. And then, you know, you haven't been startled. Just like... But you can't just, just just jump up. You know, you got to play it off. Be cool. Just... Right, right, right. And so that's how you play it off right here. You don't just lift up your head and say, hey, man, you got to be like. <laughs> like, like he was reading. <laughs> that's why I got kicked out of the church because the pastor busted me because one day I just forgot and I didn't turn the page. I was like, hey, man, hey, man, hey. Mm. And he was like, brother, I didn't even say nothing. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> uh, it, let me ask you, anybody ever been afraid? You know, we're not supposed to have us. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I love that scripture. But I guarantee you that about 80% of us have been afraid to throw away a Bible. Anybody ever throw away a Bible? That's what I thought. You know that Bible is raggedy. I mean, you got the 23rd Psalm up in Revelation. You got like pages missing. But you scared to throw that Bible away? Throw the Bible away. Get a new Bible. You just find it too cheap to buy a new Bible. I mean, all the pages bled through. Every page got highlighted marks in the front and the back. Throw the Bible away. Get a new Bible. Well, that's the word of God. It's the Bible. It's a book. Throw it away. Get you another Bible. Stop being so religious. Don't be afraid of throwing the Bible away. Quit being cheap. That's the really what it is. You can go to Family Dollar and get it for $7. <laughs> or be like me and steal one the Gideon Bible at the hotel. Y'all laughing. Somebody else done did that too, didn't you? Oh, man. Oh, man. That's funny. I think it's funny. Oh, man. Any, anybody ever... You remember you was playing outside? You used to come in the house? And your mom be like, boy, you smell like outside. <laughs> like, what do outside smell like? You know, you just smell like outside. You know, back in the day, we had some good games outside. You know, and anybody's is, what, it wasn't too many people that was over 30 in here, right? But if you're over 30, you remember these games. When people didn't really care what color clothes you had on, what your shoes looked like, when everybody had to put their foot in a circle. You know, it'd be like nine of y'all. And you'd be like... Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a pickle by his toe. Oh. Uh, engine, engine, number nine. No one knew y'all treasure nine. Bubble gum, bubble gum, man. You know, you got ragged shoes and the shoelaces missing. Nobody cared. We were just like, bubble gum, bubble gum, man. Nothing. Bubble gum, bubble gum, man. Nothing. How many pieces? Do you wish you had? Bubble gum, bubble gum, man. Nothing. Bubble gum, bubble gum, man. Bubble gum, bubble gum, man. Nothing. 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 Bubble gum, bubble gum, man. Like, what in the world is a dirty, dirty dish rag? Like, I can't just be a dirty dish rag. I got to be a dirty, dirty dish rag? No, come on, man. But you have a cheat. I used to cheat, you know. You always want the slow dude to be it, though, didn't you? You dirty, dirty dish rag. You know, you put like three syllables on one. You dirty, dirty dish 
Greg, you. Skipping all the people, like 30, 30, 30. And they're like, you ain't like it. Think about that. What was it? Like, what was it? Nobody really knew what it was. But at the same time, everybody knew what it was, didn't they? And nobody wanted to be it. You it, I ain't it. What you mean? I was it last time. You it. And then just thought of like, put your feet back in the circle. My mama and your mama were standing by the fence. <laughs> I don't know about that. Anybody ain't used to French rope? You know, double dutch? I was good though. I was skinny back then. But, you know what I'm saying? You know, you had, two, you had a good turner. Some people could turn. Some people couldn't. You get the rope. He had the long rope. Somebody had to put it behind his back. <laughs> 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 oh man, we gotta jump in. <laughs> police man, police man, do your duty. There you go, lady with the big fat. <laughs> H O T, spell hot. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Man. Anybody at? Uh, where you at? Where you at? Did he go on thug talking about them roaches? Detroit roaches? I ain't got roaches no more. None. Or rats. Either one. I got bed bugs. Oh. I'm going to tell y'all, look. Yeah. One day I was asleep, just minding my own business. Just knocked out. Then I get a knock on my shoulder, well, a tap on my shoulder. I'm like, Jonathan, wake up. Because like, hmm? I was in the sleep ministry, remember? So I was like, hmm? Wake up. And I look up. And it's like a, a, a crackhead rat and a crackhead roach. They both on each shoulder looking at me. They scratching me. And I'm like, what is going on here? It's like, Jonathan, wake up, man. We got something we need to talk to you about. I'm like, how is you talking? He was like, man, don't worry about that right now. We got some other pressing matters. Like, don't worry about that, man. You was a talking, scratching, crackhead rat. And with your buddy the roach. I'm like, what's going on? Like, just shut up and listen. Because they around here creeping somewhere. And they kept scratching. You know, like, what is going on? He's like, look, look. He's right there. He right there down the street. Look, look. So I looked down there in my bed. There's some bad blood. And I'm throwing up gang sign. Like, <laughs> we the original bloods, fool. <laughs> So that's why I ain't got no rats and roaches, you know, in the red bed. Woo, <laughs> <laughs> y'all don't know about that. Y'all don't know about that. I told y'all I'm gonna be for you long. I'm about to get out. I'm gonna leave with one more joke. Anybody in here got a teenage driver trying to train or teach a teenager? Anybody ever been with a new driver in the car with him? A couple people. Okay, so you know. <laughs> you know. I mean, it's crazy. And I don't know where it comes from, you get a discount double check. But, you know, when you ride with your driver, a new driver, and for some reason, you just, like, make up a break on your side. Because they'd be going, you'd be pushing the more harder you push. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to say nothing to them, because, you know, you don't want to discourage them, but you're still pushing down. You don't put a, a hole, now you got a hole in, the, in your side of the floorboard. I'm like, what in the world is this? Kids, I tell you. I'm going to tell you about my nephew, man. He came over to my house one day. And he had, I did say one more joke there, but I lied. <laughs> That's why I got kicked out of church, too. But anyway. <laughs> the hole, he had a big hole in his sock. And he was just running around playing. And I'm like, nephew, nephew, come here. He like six, so he ran over. He's like, what's going on, uncle? What's going on? I'm like, man, what's up with this big hole in your sock? He was like, Uncle, I can't help it, man. My toes just too strong. My toes too strong. Like, your toes are too strong. So you got a hole in your sock. Cause he just think he's so tough. And then he came out. Later on, he came out the room crying. I'm looking at him like, what were you crying for? I ain't crying, Uncle. My eyes just sweating. That's all. My eyes just sweating. That's my time. I thank you, guys. Thank you.